Hello and welcome to Have History Will Travel, your weekly dose of history. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and today we're going to talk about the anti-Masonic past of the United States. Our story begins in New York, particularly western New York in Genesee County. In the early 1800s, this was a frontier area. People had just started to move into these areas. And when people moved in, you get things like churches, schools being built, but you also have Masonic lodges emerging in these frontier areas. And Genesee County had quite a few Masonic lodges. Genesee County is also ground zero for the anti-Masonic movement, particularly when it comes to the story of William Morgan. William Morgan was a Freemason as well as a stonemason as a profession, and he had a fallen out with many of his friends in the Masonic Lodge. This fallen out resulted in him threatening to expose Masonic secrets in the local newspaper. The local Masons had him arrested for a $3 debt and later kidnapped him and allegedly murdered William Morgan. For some of us, it may be hard for us to conceive of a fraternal order that we're commonly associated with seeing as just lodges and buildings on the side of the road and also marching in parades. But in the early 1800s, it was a completely different story especially the way the citizens of the United States viewed Freemasons. Many of the Freemasons, particularly in Genesee County, were professionals. They were merchants, they were lawyers, and so they had an economic power, but they also had political power. Many of those Freemasons, once they joined the Masonic Lodge, became politicians and rose to political fame. Along with the suspected political corruption, there was also corruption associated with William Morgan's kidnap and possible murder. The Freemasons that were arrested for the murder were basically given a slap on the wrist and let go, and that's what caused a lot of the citizens in Genesee County and citizens around the United States to look at Freemasons as being corrupt politicians and seeing them as a horrible organization that had infiltrated the government as well as the military because mil many military commissions were given to Freemasons. Additionally, the church was against the Freemasons, seeing them as introducing secular morals when there should be religious morals there. And so many churches excommunicated Freemasons. Many Freemasons resigned from their post as Freemasons and re-entered the church. And so there was a social and religious dynamic within this anti-Masonic movement. Not only were they excommunicated from churches, but if they were marching in parades, they were often stoned, they were beaten, they were harassed by the local populace. It was not a good time to be a Freemason. The number of Freemasons dropped considerably in this early 1800 period. The anti-Masonic movement was so powerful that it emerged into a political party and they had a convention nominating William Wirt as their presidential candidate in 1832. Even though they only won one state, which was Vermont, it is still the very first time that a third party has won a state in a presidential election. After about a decade, the anti-Masonic movement did wither away, but it did pop up now and again all the way up until the 20th century. But 14 of our presidents were Freemasons, and we still see them today. They have lodges, they march in parades, but it goes to show you the complicated history that the United States has had, particularly when it comes to secret societies and people's idea of what could be going on behind closed doors, which scares people. And to the people in the early 1800s, threatened democracy. <laughs>